Now I'm going to talk about making levels and grids. Levels and grids are the most important part of any Revit project that you're starting. It gives you some kind of reference point by which you will orient everything and dimension everything off of. So we're going to start in the floor plan by making grids. Grids are exactly what you would expect. They're under the architecture tab and you go under datum and you see this thing called grid. Notice when I hover over something, I can also see the keyboard shortcut for it. So I could just type GR on the keyboard if I wanted to make myself a little faster. Revit has a lot of ways of doing the same thing. I'm going to click on grid and I'm going to notice now I'm in a drawing menu. I can tell because this bar on my part of my ribbon just turned green and I can see all of these different options that I have up here. It can be a little bit confusing, but we will break it down throughout the semester. Right now, I just have the default line tool and I can draw the line by just clicking on one point. And whenever I feel like ending the line, I can click on it again. I could draw any grid line in any orientation. It'll tell me what angle I have it at. But for the most part, it's a lot easier to deal with normal grids. If I want to undo anything in Revit, all I have to do is press Control Z on the keyboard, just like what you're familiar with. Let's draw a regular grid. So I'm going to draw one line, click, and I can draw another line. And notice that Revit will automatically tell me how far away I am from the preceding line. So this little nice dimension, as long as I'm nearby, it'll snap to that point. Let's say I wanted to draw another line that was 20 feet away. So I will get close enough and click and then click. Maybe that wasn't as easy as it could have been. Maybe I could have made that a little bit easier. Well, I'll use something called pick lines now. So pick lines allows me to select a certain line. And if I define an offset, let's say I defined an offset of something like 20 feet, and then I just hovered over this line and clicked, that would just automatically create another line. So that's another way of creating the same thing without having to worry about it. Different people prefer different things. This is just the way that I prefer it because I think it's faster. So I'll go ahead and create five grid lines that are 20 feet apart. To create vertical grid lines, I'm gonna to have to go back to the regular drawing lines tool and then get rid of my offset. So I will get rid of my offset and just draw one going vertically. And then I can just use pick lines to draw all of the other ones so that it's even. Now with a grid that you might be used to, you may not be expecting it to sort of overlap. You see how there's sort of extra on either side. A lot of people try to, they wanna drag it in but in fact, it's good to have a little bit of overlap because you need some space to put your dimensions on. And you'll see that when we get into our blueprint. So that's how we create grids. Let's talk about creating levels. So levels are just essentially a grid for an elevation and they define things like which levels are the floor plan. So let's go to any elevation view. So I could click on it in the project browser down here by saying east. Alternatively, another way is you see these little four house looking things right here. If I just double click on this one, takes me to the same east elevation. Notice I can see the grids that I just created over here. So drag these upward. All right, I see level one at a height of zero. I see level two at a height of 10. I feel like if it's 10 feet high, it's a little bit low for a ceiling. Let's make it 15 so there's some room. All right, I like a good 15 foot ceiling. Let's add another level. So under architecture, I will go to levels and then using the pick lines tool, exact same way that I made the grids, I can just define a 15 foot offset. And then I can create a level three. Now, be careful with the pick lines tool because if I keep clicking on the same line, it's gonna create a bunch of levels that overlap. So right now this says level 10, but that's not right. I need to make sure that I always undo until it's level three. Any additional level I make is gonna cause me problems later. So make sure you're checking the naming convention and you're making sure you don't have anything more than you actually need. So now I have level one, level two, level three. Let's make a nice little roof level that's just sort of four feet above the previous one. And now we have made some levels and grids.